Hi everyone, welcome to part one of making this needle felted fox. This is the first tutorial that I've ever made and I don't have a professional filming setup. In fact, this is all just filmed on my cell phone. So there will be some parts that might be frustrating because my hand gets in the way, but I'm gonna do my best to talk you through it and help you to make your own needle felted fox. So before you begin, you need to make sure that you have a surface to felt on, like this foam pad. And you'll need needle felting needles, barbed needles. This one is a 40T, which is the one I primarily use, but I'm also going to use the black handled 36T. This is a clover felting pen. It holds three needles, so I use this for areas of, that are larger. And these are acrylic safety eyes that I paint the back of and I don't use the safety clip, I just glue them in place. And then of course wool. So this is the core wool, which for this whole um, first part of the tutorial, this first video, this is the only wool we'll use. And then you're gonna need colored wools to make the fur of the fox in the next part of the tutorial. I'm gonna start by making something of an armature. It's not really to be poseable, but it just kind of gives something for the wool to grip onto, which you'll see in just a moment. So I took one chenille stem and twisted it just in the center, folded it in half and twisted it. And then I took a second one that I folded in half and twisted each end onto the end of the previous stem. So, so far I have two of these wires and now they're just sort of hooked together. This is forming right now, I'm going to twist together the two long pieces and that's going to form the back of the fox or its spine. And as I go along, I, I'm going to modify this quite a bit. Again, this isn't really, it's just something for me to be able to have the wool grip. So this is a third piece now, a third chenille stem and I'm twisting it. I fold it in half and I'm twisting it. I'm just doing the same thing I did with the second wire. I'm going to take the two ends that are hanging off and twist them with the two new ends that I just created. This is just to make the back legs about the same length as the front legs. And that other piece sticking up is going to be what I'm going to use as the tail. And then I decided the front legs were slightly too long, so I trimmed them a little bit. And don't worry too much about this step. I don't even always have any wire inside of my sculptures. And this wire itself, you will see, is going to change dramatically from what it currently is before we finish. Now I am mixing some paint. And I think it was maybe like a burnt sienna and a, a brownish yellow color. It doesn't really matter. Just I'm trying to go for a sort of a rusty orange color to paint these eyes. So I'm just painting the back side of the safety eyes. And these are elliptical eyes because foxes have elliptical eyes. Um, I also use these for cats sometimes. So just getting the back side painted. I got a little bit of paint on the front. It wipes right off. It's pretty easy. And then I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to start forming the head. So what I'm doing now is just rolling the wool into um, not quite a, a ball shape, but kind of a, a flat pillow shape. And once I get it kind of the shape I want to start with, I'm going to use my felting pen and get this flattened into um, a semi-felted piece of wool. So as soon as you start stabbing the wool, it starts to felt and will hold its shape. And 
and I apologize that my hand is right in front of the camera. I couldn't really tell that that was the case. I'm trying to see what I'm doing while I'm doing it and the camera was off to the side so I could see what I was doing. So now that I have the wool lightly felted in place, I'm going to grab a couple of safety eyes that are unpainted and this awl that I use to stab through my loosely felted wool. So I'm just piercing this and poking these unpainted eyes through. The eyes that I'm going to use are still drying at this point. So these are just placeholders for now. I'm not going to glue them in, but I will felt, uh, felt them in place so that they will hold the shape that I'll need. And for the next part of building this head, what I'm going to try to focus on is tightening the wool up, uh, cinching up all that wool so there's less air and the wool is more densely felted. And while I do that, I'm going to be trying to hold the wool in place so that the two eyes stay in the same plane so that we don't have one that's further back and one more forward and also work on getting the spacing that I want between the eyes. So I'm kind of scrunching the wool so that the eyes are a little bit closer to each other and just holding it how I want and felting it in place. Right now I'm stabbing, I know you can't see well, but I'm stabbing through the side so that that will start to hold the eyes closer together. And I just keep checking it. I'm tucking some of the wool around, that the extra wool that was hanging off the sides where it was too wide. And I'm just kind of stabbing in the center of the eyes now to tighten that up. And along the sides. And you do have to be mindful of the needle that it could hit those plastic posts of the eyes. These needles do break easily. And I don't usually break needles, but in this tutorial, I did break two needles. So um, just something to keep in mind that it's probably good to have extra needles and um, they're, they're very fragile. And so as I'm doing all this, it's hard to tell in the video, but I'm, I'm trying to really feel what I'm, if there's any resistance. And if I feel that plastic rod, I just stop. So just kind of keep felting as you tighten up those eye sockets, kind of just rounding it, making sure the spacing is good. Keep checking that the two eyes are in the same plane, that they're not ones too deep. Um, and I'm just kind of squeezing that with my left hand and then felting that wool in place. So you kind of can hold it and get it how you want and then and then stab the wool and it, it'll hold. So that's just more of what I'm doing here. I'm not really worried right now about the <clears throat> top or bottom of the head. I'm just working on getting the spacing of the eyes correct and them being in the same plane. So just doing some final tightening up of the wool. The eye sockets are pretty well formed by this point. The wool has tightened around them. I've stabbed from all different angles and really tried to tighten that wool up around those posts that the eyes are attached to. And now I am going to pull out these placeholder eyes. And you can see that there is a hole that has remained. And my eyes that I painted are now dry. I'm gonna put just a single drop of this tacky glue and then I will press the eye into that hole and it'll go in nicely because it's already pre-felted around it. And I'm just going to make sure that the pupils are both vertical. You'll see me continue to sort of press the eyes in place as I continue to felt the wool around them. There is glue now along the post so I continue to felt along these and press them so that it is where I want it to hold until that glue sets up better. Next I'm going to start actually building up the shape of the face. So 
I'm taking a little piece of wool and I'm rolling it into what will be just the start of the fox's nose and muzzle. So I'm going to lightly felt this just to get it to start to hold. And I'm really only going to do this on, on one end. So I'm going to stab it a few times until it really starts to hold its shape. And then I am going to leave the end that's not felted sort of long and split it, which I'll show you, just to give it um, a, a place to attach. So I'm going to pull that part open so that I have basically two, two halves that I can then felt onto the face. And this is going to have to be built up much more to create the fox's muzzle. This is just the start. I'm just trying to get a sort of nub in place on the muzzle that I can then wrap more wool around. And you'll see as I felt this that it is going to scrunch up a lot. It's mostly air right now. It's very light and fluffy. It kind of looks like a little elephant or something. Okay, now the nub is fairly solid and I'm going to start building up more wool around it. So I'm just taking small bits a couple inches long, they're not real thick, just pulling off little bits of the roving and I'm going to wrap around that nub just to get it attached, to have an attachment point. And I'm also going to be working on building up the, the cheeks, I guess you could call it, under the eye sockets of the fox needs to come forward, it needs to stick out further than the eyeball. So I'm going to be working on building up the muzzle and the cheeks and also the brow of the fox, so above the eyes. Here I'm just working on the overall shape of the forehead and where it meets the ridge of the nose. I don't want it to be too steep. And I also am just going to keep building up bit by bit using just small pieces of the core wool roving and slowly building until I get the shape that I want. Again, I'm just building up the cheek area beneath the eyes. And I'm going to continue to build up the muzzle as well. So sometimes I'm taking a piece of wool and wrapping it across the muzzle from side to side and sometimes from you know top to bottom across the forehead and down under the chin just trying to build it up from all different angles. As I'm working on the cheek area beneath the eye, 
I'm going to start kind of tucking along the outer corner of the eye to create the angled shape that the fox has. It sort of tilts downward from the outer corner of the eye at an angle that then is just, I'm going to follow up along the brow with that same angle. So as I build up the cheek, the cheekbones and the brow, you'll start to see a angle forming along the outer corner of the eye. And additionally, I'm going to go from the tear duct of the eye straight down the bridge of the nose on both sides so that it starts forming the shape where the eyes meet up with the bridge of the nose. You'll see me do a lot of pressing the wool and holding it while I felt with the needle so that it will tighten it up in different directions depending on, you know, like right now I feel like the muzzle was starting to point too downward in relation to the angle of the eyes. You don't want it to look like a droopy muzzle. So I tugged it upward with my left hand and then felted it in place. And I'm doing a little bit of that even now as I wrap it under the chin. Um, I'm tacking it down under the chin and then sort of pulling upward, felting upward, so that the muzzle comes away from the eyes at, at the angle that I was hoping. It's The wool itself is pretty forgiving. You can just press it and hold it in the shape that you need it to be and felt it, and it'll hold up to a certain point once it becomes really solid. It has less flexibility, obviously. Again, I'm just going to continue building up the muzzle, the shape of the eyes, and the cheekbones and the brow. So now I'm going to extend out the length of the muzzle. So I'm adding a little bit of wool to the tip and I may end up doing this a few times just to get it to be the length that I need it to be. So I'm going to look at the side of the face and look um, at the angles that are being formed and right now it's pretty close to the angles that I want it to end up with. I'm going to start thickening the lower part of the muzzle so that I can begin to form the shape of the mouth. So I'm gonna, you'll see me lightly start to trace in the mouth just by felting in a row. It pushes down that wool and I will get a rough outline of the mouth and then I will just continue to build on that. I'll build up and around it so that the mouth line becomes clear. And here you can see that angle that I was talking about off the corner of the eye, how the brow sort of angles down so that the outer corner of the eye has a slant sort of downward. Again, I'm just extending out the length of the muzzle here.
And now I'm going to build up the chin or the, the lower part of the jaw. And I'm continuing to add little bits of wool to the upper part of the muzzle and just continue shaping that wool and smoothing it. And that's just entirely done by stabbing a whole bunch of times with the needle. The more that you stab it, the tighter it's felted. Here I'm just going to keep refining the shape of the muzzle and, and defining the mouth. Regarding the line that the mouth makes, underneath the nose, it's going to be um, a little bit slanted downward. So it's almost straight, but there'll be a slight slanting downward when you look at it straight from the front. And then as you go along the side of the face, the mouth will pull back up again. And if you pull it up more right at the corners of the mouth it'll give it more of like a smiling expression and then I'm just continuing to work on those angles out from the outer corner of the eyes. Now I'm going to get ready to actually attach this head to my armature. I'm just putting some wool kind of sandwiching the head portion of the armature or neck portion I guess onto the head. Just tucking in this wool. It holds really well to these chenille stems, which is why I used it. Um, but it's also, they're not, they're not very strong, so it's also a little bit frustrating if you were trying to really make it hold its shape well. Uh, I would recommend using floral wire if you really want it to hold its shape. Um, and you could always wrap the floral wire with the chenille stem so that it grips the wool, because the floral wire by itself doesn't grip the wool very well, but the chenille stems just really grip that wool. And as I attach this head to this sort of armature, I realize that the head that I have built is way too big for this armature. So I'm going to extend parts of the armature, you'll see. And again, this isn't really, I have no intention of this animal being poseable. It's just an armature there to give me something to wrap the wool and it speeds up the process of building the body but anytime that you have wire inside the wool your needles are at risk of breaking so again really just be careful don't be shocked if the needle breaks and you know take your time this video is sped up a little so it looks like I'm stabbing this crazy fast in in real life I'm stabbing it much more carefully. Um, I'm going to start wrapping wool now in the chest area. And as I do the chest area, I will wrap wool around the shoulder region and then pull it back into the center and across the chest and, and just keep reinforcing the shoulder area. You'll see it's sort of a crisscross that wraps around. Although right now this is just the neck, I'm just thickening up the neck and making the neck proportioned to the head, which is going to take away some of the space that should have, that would have been the chest according to that size of the armature. And you'll see the legs will start to look really miniature, like this is a dosh hound fox. So I will extend out the legs and make it more proportional.
about here I realize this is way too short so I'm gonna just twist on some more chenille stem to extend these front legs I'm just going to do the same thing to the other front leg. Now I'm going to begin wrapping that section of wool around the leg. And I'm keeping it kind of thin to start with. And then I'm just going to start getting it belted in place just gently carefully stabbing that wool around the wire and here I'm just starting to form sort of a nub out of the wool that will give me a place to build the foot on just some wool that I'll be able to, to build up all the little toes and stuff. So this isn't a highly detailed foot at this moment. It's just a nub. And now I'm going to build up the chest and shoulder area. So I'm just tacking this piece of roving in place so that I can tug against it and uh, create a tighter wrap. So if you can wrap the wool pretty tightly, it presses out the air and, and starts to uh, speed up the felting process because now it's already squeezed and then you just felt it and it holds it better. So I'm just wrapping it around that shoulder and chest region. So I'm pulling another fairly thin strip of roving so that I can wrap it around the other front leg and chest and shoulder area. Just getting that tacked down again so that I can tug against it. And wrap it around the wire. And the, the tighter that you make that wrap, the less felting you have to do in the long run. And if it's a thinner piece of wool, it actually makes it smoother. You don't get as many lumps in your wrapping. And again, I'm going to try and add just a little bit of wool that sticks out beyond the wire at the tip of the foot to give me something I can just kind of do more shaping of toes around without having a wire in the middle that is going to just make it more likely for my needle to break. And again, I'm just taking thin strips of roving wrapping it around the leg and across the shoulder and through the chest just to really strengthen that and make sure that there's adequate separation between the two front legs that the chest area will be clearly defined and that the legs are really solidly and securely attached to the chest and shoulder area Here I'm just tightening up that makeshift foot so it's not quite as floppy. This is when I actually am starting to decide what pose this fox is going to be in. 
I initially thought I might make it standing, but now I'm sort of playing around with the idea that I think I would like the fox to be sitting. So again, this is just how I do this. It, it could be literally different. If I had initially anticipated making the fox sitting, I might have done things different. I just go with whatever the situation is and just, um, I don't have a one exact set way of making any of these animals. I just mm, kind of play it by ear, I guess, and see how things are going and what needs to be done. So on this particular fox, this is the way I did it. I just am going to convert those two wires that are on the bottom, those hind legs. They're only going to be just the lower part of the leg, basically the hawk down. Um, I guess it might be, and I will add in the upper portion of the leg, which will have the knee. I'm just wrapping more of the body now, extending out its back, and getting that filled in with wool. I'm not too concerned right now about the look of the wool. I'm just getting it on there and then I'll tighten it and smooth it as I go. I'm adding another strip of robing, continuing to build up the body of the fox. I just tacked it in so that I can pull more tightly so I can start really tightening up the body. I'm holding it firmly with my left hand so that it's nice and tight, getting that part tacked down. So now it's it's holding and it, all of this will get felted much more through this whole process so that it's dense and, and firm. And I'm going to do a lot of continuing to bend the body into the, the shape that I want. I'm not really relying on these chenille stems to hold that shape. It's the wool itself. So what I'll do is bend it and hold it with one hand and then felt it into place. Right now I'm just sort of messing around with different possibilities. How I might want the legs to tuck in a little more so that the the chest and shoulders are more defined. I'm going to start wrapping the rump of the fox. And the hind legs. Similar to how I did the front legs, leaving just a little bit that sort of extends beyond the wire where I can build the little toes and paws. Sometimes I do felt small areas with the needle just very close to my other fingers. I very, very rarely poke myself. I, I think I've learned just over time the, the depth that I'm poking and the length of the needle, but it, it's painful if you get poked. So um, if you're not sure about doing it that way, you can always just flip the fox over and let those hind legs lay on the felting pad and then stab it that way instead of stabbing it up in the air like I was just doing just to save your your fingers. I'm doing a similar crisscross pattern of wrapping the wool around the rump just like I did around the chest.
Here I decide I'm going to extend out the chenille stem for the tail. So I just reached a small piece of the chenille stem through that loop that was previously there that I had twisted and then attached it, just twisted it on. It doesn't have to be anything super strong. I'm again going to really create the shape using the wool. And as I said before, you absolutely don't have to have any of these wires. I think for probably the first year and a half, maybe, that I needle felted, I never put wire in any of my items and you can definitely form shapes. I just decided that I like to put the chenille especially in there just because it grips it so nicely and and then it gives me a really fast starting point for getting the shape that I want. But I'm going to create the shape of this tail using the wool and the position and, and everything of the tail is going to just be done through sculpting the wool itself. I just wrapped the wool around the tail just like with the legs nice and thin and I'll just gradually build up the tail and at the tip I just sort of tucked in the extra roving that was hanging over to start building a smooth shape. Here I'm going to start just thickening up the hind quarters of the fox, just wrapping more wool, holding it tight and tacking it in place. I'm just looking at the overall shape and I can see that this left front leg, the elbow wasn't bending at the right direction so I just kind of bent it the way I'd like to start building it. And I'm going to keep working on the body, thickening it and making it more dense so that eventually it's going to really hold its shape and it won't flex. In the meantime, I'm going to keep adjusting the curvature of the back and holding it and then felting it in place like right now I'm kind of bending it. It's a little hard to see but I'm using my left hand to bend it so that the curve is more pronounced. Here I'm just tightening up that wool that's kind of loose and fluffy. This pen works good for large areas um, or any areas that you kind of want to felt quickly because it's got three needles and so it really presses down and, and tacks it on. This little pillow that I'm making now is going to become the knee area that's bent where the fox is sitting and I'll build this up more and more but this is the start of it. So there's no wire in this part. It's just a little pillow of wool that I'm going to felt onto the body so that we start defining where the the knees and the, the haunches of the fox are. I'm just making the second little wool pillow to begin shaping the knee on the fox's right side. Just tucking it over a little bit so it's the shape that I would like. Just hold it in place and then begin stabbing it onto the body. You'll notice that I am stabbing sort of along the edges. I am going to stab all through the rest of it as well, but what I'm trying to do is begin to create the edge and define the edge of where the legs are. I'm 
I'm using this felting pen now to just make sure it's firmly attached. I'm going to work on this left shoulder a little bit more. It's got a little bit of a weak connection there. It's not reinforced very well. And I want it to hold the shape of the fox's elbow in the right direction here. So I'm just building that up again. Just really wrapping firmly, tightening up these shoulders and the attachment of the leg. I'm pressing firmly with my left hand holding that wool and just going to build up that shoulder. use this felting pen to tighten up the chest. I want to make sure that it's also really defined that the two legs aren't touching each other, um, that it's clear that there's a separation. Just kind of playing with different ideas of the pose for the fox. The feet are sort of turning a little in the front, which then gave me the idea that maybe I'd like the fox to be sitting but starting to turn and look to his right. So I leave them like that for now and just kind of play around with this idea of what shape it might be. I'm just tightening up some of the wool that's a little bit loose around the foot area so that it's not floppy, so it's firm enough that I'll be able to build on top of it. And decide maybe I want this box to turn a little bit. So I decide if he's going to be facing toward the right, I want the tail to come around so that we'll see his fluffy tail um, when he's facing us. Now I'm just trying to lock in place the angle that I'm going to want the head to be at. Right now I'm going to be poking wool that's from the neck up into the head and wool from the head down into the neck and just really getting it secure. And right now his head is higher than what I would, what I end up deciding to do. So you'll see me change it several times. It's it's pliable for quite a while. So you'll be able to change your mind on the exact positioning of your fox. going to continue building up the area where the knee and the rump of the fox are. Then again, I'm just really tucking along the edge of this knee to make sure that it's really defined. Then I want to try and make sure that there's a clear definition between the rump and the tail. So I'm just sort of folding this inward here to create a clear definition there. The 
I'm just tightening up the, the wool in the leg area between the femur and the knee and the shin, that, that whole area where the leg is bent. Just making sure it's nice and tight. Just starting to build up the tail more, adding thin um, strips of roving, getting them tacked on there and then wrapping them. As I do this, I'm holding the tail in a curved shape because I want it to be curving a little bit towards the body. So as I attach all that wool, I'm just felting it into the position that I want it to be. Here I'm going to make basically another one of those little pillows out of the wool. I'm going to add on to the, the femur area between the knee and the hip. Just make it, so I'm just tacking it onto the rest of the, the portion of the leg right there. And the top part where there will be a, uh, an edge of the leg visible. I'm going to just try and keep that edge remaining. So all of this area back here, I'm going to go ahead and blend it. I'm just smoothing that leg portion into the rump. But along the front edge and along the top edge, I'm going to try and allow the separation to, to stay visible. I'm just sort of tucking in some of the fluff here, um, shaping the area that's basically the shin up to the knee. Now I'm up near the knee and then just tacking down more of the wool that I just added in. And again this whole portion should be smooth from the rump to where the leg is. You can see on the right hand side it's not. There's a you can still see the separation there. So I'm going to make a second little wool pillow and I will adjust that. So where I'm tacking down right now is the area that I want to end up smoothing. And then where I'm wrapping it here in the front, I'm going to leave a visible crease in the wool so that you can see where the, the knee actually is. This portion I'm going to smooth and just have it blend in to the back and to the rump. So I'm just going to tighten up all this wool and really just smooth it so that there isn't a clear division of the leg and the rump in this portion. Up here though, I do want to keep that division and along the front here I want it to be clear. Just 
continuing to tighten up the wool along the whole body. I'm trying to keep getting the shape that I want, just slowly working with it and adding more, thickening up the torso. Here I'm just crisscrossing the wool again around the chest and neck, giving it more support, tightening up the connection between the head and the neck so that it'll really hold its position. So I'm keeping that head turned and then just poking wool that's in the neck up into the head and again up from the head down into the neck. I'm going to add a little bit more wool to try and smooth out the lines where the hind legs were attached so it just looks like it's all smooth and just part of his rump. Just wrapping this around also this little tail that kind of hung off of the wool. Reinforcing the part of the tail where it connects to the body. Smoothing all of all of this, making sure it's nice and and felted. A lot of what I'm going to be doing is just tightening up the wool making sure it's all cinched up and not just full of air, but it's got a, a good strong felt to it. And so I kind of feel it and just keep working with it, squeezing out the air, getting it all tightened up. I'm gonna add more wool to the body just kind of got that tacked in place and I'm really wrapping it pretty tight which will make it really strong just smoothing that all tightening that you can kind of see at his waist it's sort of cinched up now I'm gonna do the same thing moving upward tacked it down and now I'm gonna really try and get it attached and smoothed on there Just layer by layer, it becomes thicker and more, more densely felted. I'm going to continue to thicken up the elbow region. So right here is the fox's elbow. The elbow should be pretty close to right in line with its chest when it's sitting. Start to get a little more definition on that. And here I'm wrapping another small pillow shape just because I need to thicken up the area of the rump. It was a little bit too dished in there. So I'm just building it up, adding a little hump onto the back like a camel. 
but I will smooth all that out. It's just to thicken it up so that it has a nice smooth shape. Still working on making sure the elbow is is well formed and I'm gonna build now what's basically the I guess the bicep and the, and the chest area it's kind of a in between maybe it's the pectoralis muscle um, that I'm building right here I'm just adding a small pillow and thickening that that portion that would be right above the elbow on the front and I'm going to do that on both sides. So I have another little bundle of wool that I'm going to attach to its left side. And I'm just covering it with another little strip of wool, getting that all tacked down so that we're starting to get the correct shape. Just adding a little bit more wool along the neck because I want to have more wool too work with to push up into the head and be able to lock that head into the position that I want. So I'm tacking it down along the lower part and then poking it up into the head, tacking all that wool so that it just really holds. Just again working on making sure that the front leg is defined. This is the elbow right here. I'm just gonna make sure that it has the right angles. Now what I'm doing is I'm curving the back a little bit. So you see how I kind of pulled up on the body. I'm trying to make sure that the shape of the back is in the curve that I want it to be for the sitting position that I want it to hold. And just adding more wool along that back area where I feel like it was just sort of had become too divoted. I want to make sure his back is nice and smooth. Just adding another layer of, of wool back here, smoothing it out. Checking the front legs. So right along here is the scapula. I'm just building that up so that it's more believable. And the upper portion of it is essentially the collarbone right up against where the neck is. Where my left thumb is is basically the collarbone so we'll try and make sure that there's a slight um, protrusion I guess right there. Right there. Just defining that the collarbone and scapula area. Adding a little bit more wool to the neck. And again, making sure that tucks up into the head. Here again, I'm I'm kind of squeezing so that it's like the fox is is doing a crunch or sit up or you know, tightening those abdominal muscles because I'm trying to scrunch it to make sure that that wool holds in the curve that I want it to hold. I don't want it too stretched out. I want it to look like it's it's sitting. And right here, <laughs> I break one of the needles off of my felting pen. It's not really a big deal. I have extras, but for the rest of this project, I just leave these two in. I suppose if another one would have broke, I would have gone ahead and replaced them, but Two is okay. So I just continue to work with the pen with just the two. 
Then on the back side of the front legs, we're going to start to want to define that leg. This is just the beginning of the definition, just to make sure that it's clear that there's a leg there and it's not just one big lump of wool. Above the elbow, it's going to need to sort of tuck inward, um, sort of paralleling that shape that is on the chest. But it's, I don't have it quite doing that yet. So here, maybe smoothing this out a little bit. In the shoulder area. Just tightening up all this wool. I'm just going to continue to make sure that I have the head really locked in place the way that I want it to be. So I'm just, I kind of have it scrunched, exaggerated right now. The head turned to the right a little more exaggerated. I'm just pulling down the wool that's up in the back of the head, making sure it's really pulled down and tucked in there. I find that if I sort of exaggerate the position and get it pretty tight, it's easy to just gently pull if I need to loosen it just a little bit. So I really want to make sure I have his head turned to the right and tucked. And I'm just bending the legs a whole bunch. It doesn't really matter right now. They're just, they're very pliable. As they get more wool on them, they'll stiffen up more. But. So this one, this needle I'm using is a 36T and it is a thicker gauge needle. It's stronger. I think I've only ever broken maybe one of these. So they're kind of, they're kind of good for areas that have a lot of wire or that you might be stabbing really farther in to the sculpture. But I like the yellow one better and here is where I break the yellow one. That's my 40T and it is breakable. There's wire in there and so I broke it but I have others. So now I'm just going to build up the back of the head so that it can represent um, how the skull would be on a fox. It wouldn't be like just sloped off in the back. I'm just going to build it up a little bit so it's more rounded. And then I'm kind of, again, folding it so that there's a good arch to the back. So I'm kind of having it doing a, a crunch again, making that curve shape and just felting it in place. Smoothing out some of the wool along the head. Moving out some of the legs so that it's not too puffed out. And add a little bit of wool through the chest to make sure that he's got a nice puffy chest. I'm going to keep it separated from the front legs. I want to make sure that a nice clear definition still remains between the legs and the chest. And that's pretty much it for this portion with the core wool. There's still a lot more shaping that's going to be done and more definition, but I'm going to use the, the other wool for that. So we'll see you back here for part two of the Fox tutorial.